Thanks for staying with us. So we have on the show a friend of the house, a social entrepreneur, an agri-business lecturer at the University of Maryland College Park in the USA, Mrs. Tokwe Fajing Besin Balogun. Welcome to the show. Thank Welcome. You. She'll be discussing the imperative of having a resilient spirit and most appropriate ways of responding to difficult times. We're so happy to have her here on the show with us. Thank you. Good to have you. So before we even go into the issue of resilience, mm -hmm. I want you to touch on this issue of landlord, because I know you live abroad. Yes. I know you also have uh, properties in Nigeria for your left. Yes. And what's your experience like um, home and abroad in, in tenancy, paying monthly or annually? What do you think is most appropriate at this time, do you think? I don't think either should be legislated. Okay. Because I think the government cannot pick and choose how they want to respond to this high housing crisis. In America, for example, where I live, we pay monthly. However, somebody can refuse to give me their house if I have a bad renting history. So how do I, as a Nigerian landlord, know your rental history? Also, the second point is, if somebody defaults abroad, and it's because of economic reasons, they can decide to apply for a housing voucher. So the government starts to pay me, the landlord, most of the rent as soon as that approval is done. Is that going to be done? Mm. Because if you tell a landlord that they should, you know, take a risk on me and they don't have any records, they don't have any recourse, what happens to that landlord if that is their means of survival? That goes to the system we were talking about earlier. That yeah. Before you start saying you want to be monthly, yes. there is a system to protect all the parties. Absolutely. I think you've totally answered Absolutely. that question. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about resilience. Yes. You know, um, people go through difficult times. I think we talked about it very recently. You know, how Nigerians, sometimes a lot of pressure. And they seem, especially with the, I mean, the different angles to this, especially with the children we're raising today. Hmm. They are so spoiled. They don't enter buses. They don't do, do anything. They are kept. They are, you know, they're drinking cereal for breakfast, sausages for lunch, <laughs> you know, spaghetti for dinner. You know, they, and they just, so, I mean, yeah, they're, they don't have that resilience. So how do we, especially when you hit the rocks hmm. as an adult, what can we begin to do to build resilience, not just in children, but in ourselves? So I have 13 nieces and nephews. <laughs> and the ones that are old will tell you that, they will say something to you if you ask that question. They'll say, the future belongs to the hungry. Hmm. And if you ask them where they heard it, they heard it from me. I've been saying it since they were little. Because the future really does belong to the hungry. Hmm. I lecture at the University of Maryland, and a lot of Nigerian parents send their kids to the University of Maryland. And it's so easy to see a Nigerian child book smart. They are very brilliant, but they're not resilient. Mm. They can't handle even the tiniest racism. They can't, they've never worked. And mommy falls on hard times in Nigeria, the pocket money dries up, they flunk. Mm. So I think we need to start raising our kids, especially those of us who have that luxury of you take your kids abroad. Mm. Nigerians need to stop bringing their kids abroad and going to Disney World. You need to stop bringing your kids abroad and going to the mall. Yeah. Now, okay, where should we go? Take your kids to where the Oyibo people take their kids when you are there in July and August. They're mm. in camp. Oh, boot camps. And they're working. Mm. And they're doing, mm. they're doing things that are building their character. Their minds. They're learning how to use their hands. Mm. They're learning, you know, science things. They're learning how to be a mechanic. They're learning how to farm. They're learning how to shop mm. and how to sell. How to be but, but, but shouldn't there be a balance? Because uh, what I know, for, okay, I'm not talking generally now, yes. but I know some parents who, we do boot camps. My yes. kids have gone to boot camps where yes. they have to. My daughter can make her hair. She makes hairs. She does, you know, they, they've started doing businesses in little ways. Yes. They are doing coding and all. They do that. Yes. But at some point, I say, okay, let them go and see and have fun. Absolutely. Would, you, would I be judged for that? No, you shouldn't be judged for that. But what I'm saying is that don't make your holiday about a holiday. Okay. Think about the typical Nigerian Experience. family. They're in um, America for maybe two weeks to four weeks. Okay. And what part mm. of that experience is a learning experience? My kids. nieces and my nephews, they know when they enter my house, <laughs> there are three things you get. The first thing is a bowl that is your color. So if I see it in the sink, you're in trouble. The second one is a cup that is your unique color as well. <laughs> the third one is a notepad. At the end of every day, you must write about your day. Mm. And what you activities? must also debrief me on the news. I want to hear about economics, about sports, about it's entertainment, about yeah. and everything that would improve yeah, your, your mind. That's what age. age. <laughs> That's what age. age. Well, the youngest started when he was, I think, six. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Six. 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 Because the, the truth of the matter is that this is what we people do. Yeah. 
you know, it's 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 so yeah. unfortunate like that, that we 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 I don't we I won't like say this in English. I'm out for work for I don't know how to say it in English. But you know, we we're just there, we're just babying kids. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And we we're hungry. Mm. I always say that uh, Americans raise their kids this way. When they're born, it's like learning how to swim. They put the baby in the pool. The baby falters, 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 and the baby tries to drown, they pull it out and put the baby back again until the baby stabilizes. Nigerians, on the other hand, that have small change, eh? We put the baby on our back. For 21 years, we're going lap to lap, lap to lap, lap to lap. Then at 21, we say, oh yeah, swim now, mm. and the child will drown. Mm. We're not building tough people. And I understand that, you know, Nigeria is dangerous. So you can't just send your child, like when we were young, that you know, our enter boss. Yeah. Mm. You can't, yeah, yes, you can't do that now. But then you have to improvise. You have so to find a way. Yourself, because us. I really want us to drive this conversation home. So yes. yes, we understand we need to build our children to be more resilient. But what can we do? Okay. What are those things? That, because sometimes you send your kids to coding school and yeah. there's issue of um, molestation here. Mm. You're, you're scared of so many Cyber factors, bullying. even abroad. Yes. So you're scared. You don't have those children around you per time. You're afraid. So how do you, as a parent, make those kind of decisions? So when COVID first hit, yeah. for example, one of the things that so I run United for Kids Foundation, but it's for children from low-income families. But when COVID first hit, and my nieces and nephews, they couldn't travel, nobody could go anywhere. So I decided to gather all of them online. And I put them in a boot camp. And some of their friends from their schools were also there. And I could see very simple things that I could help correct. For example, there was one boy, he came to the class online the first time, and he wore a do-rag. <laughs> and I said, no. You don't make a first impression that way. You don't. So, but his parents were there when he was showing up in a place, in a space, with odd people in a durag. And then this same boy, maybe two or three days after, his dad sends me an email and says, oh, so so sos netbook is spoiled, and we've sent it to this and this place. And I said, let him email me himself, mm. not you. Let him take excuse, and then we will talk about how he can log on from the phone. We need to stop hovering. Mm. We, we just need to stop it. We need to let kids be able to think. Mm. For themselves. Let's go to a quick break. I'm loving this conversation. Stay yeah. with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Fantastic. Let's, let me come to you, Bill Biagilu. Your question. Yeah, I, I, okay, let me go. So, um... I want to disagree a bit uh, in comparison with the Nigerian children and American children because you're sounding like they all have it together. The American kids have it together, but we still have a lot of them commit suicide. We still have a lot of them cyberbullying, drugs, and all that. So if the, their parents are more intentional in raising them, why do we still have them go through all of these vices that even our children are just even beginning to get into? Hmm. That's such an excellent point. So I always say that Nigerians, eh, we have to be very mindful of the Oyimbo people that we are copying. Uh -huh. So when I'm talking about these American children, I'm talking about the ones I want my kids to be like. Okay. I'm talking about the ones who are on honor roll. I'm talking about the ones who are making changes. I'm talking about the ones who, you know, I want my kids to, to aspire to be like. Okay. America is 360 million people with, I'm sorry, maybe half of them crazy. So I'm not talking about those ones. Mm. It was when I got to America and I started working that I realized that my boss, his kids don't watch television. Because one day I was talking about, oh, American Idol. And then my boss said, oh, I, I watch it weekend, I catch up weekend. I was like, ah, oh, why? She said, oh, because I don't let my kids watch TV during the week. Oh. I was like, eh. Then I started realizing that this was very, very common. They have device rules. But again, these are the Americans that... They're not on MTV Cribs. Oh, we don't see those. You don't ones. see those ones, mm. but eventually you see them when they become the governor of a state. Mm. You see them when they be, when they get to the house. Mm. They are the ones that, as soon as summer hits, the kids are in Congress, mm. as early as 15, 16, sitting down and shadowing lawmakers. Mm. So of course, when they now go to university and study political science, and they come back they and they are, they, are they know what they're talking so about. So national assembly mm. to, for people to come and shadow. Actually, actually, yes, it is actually. It's just for me. I feel that it's about you going to ask if there's opportunity. If you remember, um, um, mommy Jamiloju. Jamiloju um, is, um, is someone from my children's school. When she was, it was in primary school, as at nine. He was working in a library during holidays. Mm. 
he was a library bookkeeper. He likes to read. His parents said, we're not going to buy you all the books, but if you, mm. if you work part-time in the library, you help them arrange the library books. You can, read, you can read all the books you want to read. All the storybooks are available for you. But he had to work there at the time. That level of exposure, we're not giving as many children as possible. Mm. And I think that if you walk up to the National yeah. Assembly and you write a letter Past to your states, representative yes, and say this. Let's, so, is fair. Let's yeah. talk about past states. So yes. what you just mentioned is great. Yeah. So you have lawmakers who then have to, who can mentor these children because mm. they're in their shadows watching them and learning from right, them. There's another angle I want to say because hmm, Nigeria is hard. Yes. Already. Everybody works really hard to make some kind of wealth. Yes. You now make the wealth. <laughs> My children must not suffer. Yes. Mm. The, the, suffer I, 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 I walked the, Lego, the streets of the Lagos State. Mm. My children must not work. So you give them the, the comfort of yes. life. Yes. You take them abroad for summer holidays. You don't want yes. them to go to camp. Yes. Go and see the buildings. Look, look at Bajor Lara. Dream yes. big. Look, <laughs> just have that dream imagination. Come back to Nigeria. I know that, okay, you are a bit better. You are the 1% of the 1%. Hmm. Now, is that damaging? Or is that actually helping the child to have a bigger vision of life? Okay, it's more than Exposure. down for all yellow buses. It's mm -hmm. more than a Okada rider. There's a life outside this yeah. somewhere else. So how, how do we ensure that we balance it, as you said earlier? So I, I, I agree with you that if you've hustled, your kids should enjoy. However, do you want to raise consumers or producers? Mm. Because consumers are broke under accumulators of wealth. And I want you all to read this book, all your audience, The Millionaire Next Door. It's a profile of American millionaires, real millionaires, and read how they raise their kids. Now, you who wants your kids to spend the three weeks going to Burj Al Arab, taking pictures in the Dubai waterfall and all of this stuff, you're raising a consumer. Mm. However, if that is the exception, if they know that, oh, after Monday to Friday and we've, you know, brainstormed with kids, I am going to go to Burj Arab on Saturday, mm. that is novelty. And mm. that's what you want to keep your kids... That's the balance. Yes. You want to keep your kids hungry. Mm. Mm. Because if they know that, uh, as we're here now, anything we want, we're going to do... Is, exactly. Mm. There's no fire. Mm. And eventually, your kids are going to be poorer than you. It's not a curse. It mm. is a fact. I'm an accountant, so I no, see no, this. Toshimos, so that mentality is... Mm. Look, only 30% of people who are rich, who raise their kids rich, are, we, are able to continue. The wealth. Retain, the wealth. retain the wealth. Only 30%. Mm. So what part do you want to be? And if you look at those 30%, what are you doing? Mm. Bill Gates gave his daughter a ranch, a mansion in New York State. Yeah, it's not spoiling his child, but he didn't buy his child that mansion and that ranch as soon as that child was small. That child still understood that they needed to work. Mm. So and we can do it at home, mm -hmm. here. <clears throat> We have libraries, poor people. Let your kids go and volunteer. Want to, so doing so I, want to, I want to bring it into um, rewarding a child. Yes. You know, creating that reward system. Yes. Um, I feel that children should earn something. You know, yes. like create a system where you, are, you get a voucher for school today. If you do this well, you will get another voucher. Um, how do we create that reward system? We, how do we find a balance in creating reward system? Excellent, excellent. So... I came to Nigeria with my uh, nieces, right? And they are half American, half Nigerian. Okay. And they said, we want to take treasure boxes to your kids at United for Kids in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And me, the Nigerian me, I didn't understand what they meant mm -hmm. until we met in the airport and they showed me the treasure boxes. So I said, oh, tell me about this. How did you come up with this? So it's a, it's a box full of like candy, toys, all kinds of things. So my niece, who is nine, said in our class, this thing is right there, you can see it in the class. Once you answer a question correctly, the teacher can say, go get something from the treasure box. Mm. Mm. Okay. If you're well behaved, you, you, know, you, 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 you have a reward. But if a child knows that I can just hop into the toy room and take and something, take anything. You, you're, you're killing that child. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go back to the issue of resilience. Because yes. a lot of kids are suicidal. And, I mean, I think you, you said something earlier about the fact that children who go abroad, they, they, they are smart, they're brilliant, but when they hit small resistance like this, they break. I mean, it seems that many of them might actually have issues within the educational system. How can Nigerians who are sending their children abroad have a better understanding? How do I prepare my child who I'm, who's going to be living abroad for the very first time alone? <laughs> how, how do I raise that child? Or how do I ensure that child is resilient to hit any, um, just get the hit uh, issues abroad? So I went to school in Nigeria up to undergraduate. So I'm not knocking the Nigerian education system when I say this. But our education system is very deficient because it doesn't raise people who are able to think. We say the same thing here every day. It, it doesn't. So it raises you, you, 
I, I was best graduating student in my faculty. Imagine. So, you know, it, it raises you to know the content. And then I got to grad school in America and I struggled. Mm. I struggled. And that is because in America, for example, part of my syllabus, as I'm putting together my syllabus, is that you have to participate, you have to talk in the class. And you cannot talk nonsense. That's 10% of the grade. Mm. And in Nigeria, you know, when you're in class, it's like empty barrels make the most noise. So you know the stuff, let your grades speak for you. Mm. No, that's not how it works. So that is a culture shock for most of our kids. Mm. Secondly, when I go to my class next week, in my business management class, the first topic is, I'm giving you 10 minutes, go on Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, and tell me how companies are coping with the COVID-19 pandemic <laughs> in the 21st century. These are second year students. So many of them are like 18, 19 years old. And then after 10 minutes, you I call on you, cold call, and you have to make a presentation. Mm -hmm. You have to think on your feet. So if you know that your child's destination is abroad, you have to understand how the system is there and start to prepare your child because it's unfair to the child for you to, to take them, them yes, and throw them into that system. Nigerian system. Yes, Nigerian. you have so, to just learn. Let's bring this home. You know me, maybe some of us are raising to send. Me, I'm raising just to make it here first. Yes. So you can move if you, if you choose. Yes. So this is where I am. Yeah, like my dad. How do we yes. raise our children? Just yesterday, yes. my daughter goes for weekend yes. boarding for her Tafis classes, and she came and just said, I don't want to go. This is half of, this is almost the 100,000 naira weekend alone. Yes. And you don't want to go. Okay. <laughs> who is That's bullying you? The first question, who is somebody bullying you? Because I need to see the person's parents. Yes. And I eventually was just because, I'm just not feeling some group of girls. Eh? <laughs> and you know, so how do we raise these children to understand this environment and survive here? Because I just think I'm the role model. She'll see me and she'll survive. But she may not pick how you. do we be intentional? In what language, what words do we put it to a child? You know, a nine. She's nine. Okay, nine year old. How do I put it to a nine year old that, you know, this is how it's important okay. survival, making it, being successful and fulfilling purpose here? Yes. Okay, so on the issue of your daughter, I have two responses to this. On the issue of your daughter, so me, that I was a Nigerian before, eh, I would have said, is somebody bullying you? But let me tell you what happened. So when we got to the Nigerian airport, you people know how the Nigerian airport can be uh, very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So my nephew, he's five. He's four going to be five. He was, I could see that he was just disturbed. Mm. So I bent down to his level and I said, what's the problem? I didn't say, are you angry? Mm. I didn't say, are you tired? Let me give you a chair. No, I asked him to label the feelings. Mm. So he said, I'm sad. I said, why are you sad? So he was telling me why he was sad. And I was giving him, you know, he said, I'm hot. I said, where we're going, there's air conditioning. So meaning that your suffering is short. Mm -hmm. He said, there are too many people. I said, we'll soon be out of here in about five, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'm, he's the one telling me how what's wrong, feeling. how he's feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one telling him how he should how be he feeling. Should feel. mm -hmm. ah, that is, this is something that I've learned in America that I, you know, it's like, yes, what is wrong? Why are you not going? Yeah, blah, blah, you start to shout. That's the first thing. Second thing is, it's also very important to show our kids perspective. When my nieces come to visit me in America, they know they're going to go to the men's shelter. Men who do not have work visa, who do not need work visa, who are not refugees, who are American men, who some of them have gone to Harvard and have fallen on hard times, they go serve them food. I make them go serve them food in a Catholic men's shelter. Hmm. So that they understand. Life. They understand. Because your kids what can, can happen you, if you fail. Yes. Mm. You cannot tell your kids, oh, the future belongs to the hungry, and that's it. When they don't know the hungry. You must <laughs> show the picture of let, let me so so um, one of the problems I have, um, being um, a Montessorian, there were certain things like what you're saying now, we had to go through, I had to work with kids for over five years. So we know some of these things, and there are some schools that already prepare these children for those who are traveling abroad. I worked in one of them. Uh, but the issue now is, if you're married to a partner who doesn't have the same uh, <laughs> values in child yeah. oh, upbringing Lord. as you. So last week, I picked up a book, Boundaries with Kids. I've, re I've read it before, and I had to pick it up again because I just felt like, I, I don't want to shout this shout I'm shouting. I have these skills. But Oga is not helping me. He, he has a different perspective yeah. of life. And yeah. so we clash. Yeah. How do you get your other partner to understand that we need to institute this 
boundaries, if you want to raise, because I was having a conversation, I told him, our parents got away with raising us absent-mindedly. We will not get away this generation. You know, if, you, to be online. if you are not, your partner, if you are yes. absent-minded with your children, you go here. Yes. So how do you get your partner to be on the same boat, especially when it comes to punishments, rewards, and all yeah. those things we need to start putting together? So this is a very tough question. Chai, you would not prepare for this one. <laughs> but I'll say that having, this is, so I'm married and this is my second marriage. And in my first marriage, actually I was thinking about this this morning, exactly 11 years, one month ago, I had a stillbirth. I lost the child that I was supposed to have in that marriage. And this morning, as I was getting ready for this, I was thinking, thank God I didn't have a child with that man. Wow. Because if I did, I don't know how I would co-parent with him. So, since this is Nigeria, and people are, you know, people find themselves in this situation, right? I would say, we know, we do what we know how to do best, pray. Hey. Because God is eternal of hearts. <laughs> but if you can if you are able to show your partner examples of what your kids might turn to, if you guys show two faces in front of them, then I think that will help. Okay. Because sometimes we, we, we are created to be forgetful. Mm. We're created, this is your, your, your let partner. Me, let is, me give you an example of, yeah. of something that she could say. So a partner, for example, believes that you have to spank a child. Okay. You must beat this child because he, they beat the him spoiler. and he has turned out very well. And you are saying, I can have a conversation with this, with child. this child. Because that's what the Oyimbo 30% does to the children. <laughs> and maybe some of them spank, but the point is that we don't want to copy and paste. Mm. We want to copy based on what we what suits, uh, what, what suits our own child. So how do you, when your parents say, your partner say, spank, you know what I'm saying? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, can speak, we how do I how do I find a middle ground? So I, I think whether you find a middle ground or not, the child must never know that there is no middle ground. Oh, that's, important. that's, the, first that's thing. the first thing. That's the well, only that's risky. That's no, risky. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're gonna be some Yes, you yes. Yes, but but even want to fight about it behind closed doors mm. because once your kids see a crack. Mm. They take advantage. They, they're not old enough to process that crack. Mm. You are, but they're not. Mm. So even if you're going to beat yourself inside the room, beat yourselves. But whoever has done something, the other person should stand the by person it. Should stand by it. So that's why I said your next thing is to pray. Hey, because there's no way you and your you and your spouse are raised in two different um, yes. households. Yes. So you, you're not going to agree. Mm. But as long as there aren't fundamental differences. Okay then I say the rest you can pray about it. So I want to take us to the fact that the cost, because of the cost of living, the hustle spirits here that we don't have a choice about because you want to give your children a better life, you want a better life, many parents are forced to work so hard mm. that they barely have time for their children. For their children. And really, if you say, it's easy for us to say, oh, make the sacrifices, your children need you. But you see the bills and you know you need to make that money. So how can a parent watching right now, knowing that there's a lacuna but cannot resign from the job to face this parenting yeah. thing full time, how can, how can you make little time count? And what are the core things you should do with the little time you have with your children? That's it. So I will tap into my faith to say this. The Quran says that parent, uh, wealth and children have been given to you as a trust. Mm -hmm. oh. That's such a heavy... Heavy, heavy trust. assignment as a trust. And it's left to you oh, yeah. how you want because to discharge that trust. Mm -hmm. But most of the things that we really, really want after, I want my child to go to a better school, really? And you went to a, a, a jack of day school and you turned out okay. <laughs> Sometimes we're not really, really thinking long term. And I'm not the one to tell anybody how to make a choice, right? But I'm... I want to say, think well about the trust that you've been handed mm. and how you are discharging that trust. Because the only thing the human soul needs is to eat, to sleep, and to breathe. Everything else is luxury. Mm. Everything else is luxury. Mm. Oh, but, but my child is going to enter bus. It's luxury. But my I'm child struggling. is going to go to a school where the teacher doesn't speak good English. That's luxury. Mm. You have to be very mindful the, the, very when, you, when you're making the trade-off. You know, I think what we don't do enough as Nigerians is that we're not intentional. Mm. We make very, you know, oh my God, I'm frustrated right now and hasty I need to, decisions. yes, very hasty. But think long term. Think about the implication of this decision you're about to make in the next 10 years. So, this is, let's talk about United for Kids. This is something that you've done for a long time. What's the 
difference. What do you see in those children, you know, and you see in the sheltered, pampered children that, you know, you'd like to bring out there? And how long have you done it? So this is our 20th year. Wow. I started United for Kids Foundation the very year I moved to America because I was missing Nigeria. <laughs> and I was like, I just gathered my six Nigerian classmates and said, you people, you can give me two dollars. So we raised two dollars and we sent it to Nigeria. And we've just been evolving since. And we're still all volunteers. Like, I'm here on my own time. We're all volunteers. But we have paid staff in Nigeria. However, somebody came to our library yesterday. Our li we have a library in front of ExxonMobil headquarters. So this person came into the school and she brought books that her kids are not using anymore. And she called me, she said, I saw hope mm. when I went to the kids. The kids had a presentation about Hausa culture yesterday. That one kid made two, and you know, the kids in that school, many of them are either housemates themselves or mm. children of Migads mm. in the VR area. So we're not talking about people who made two because they had extra money. Mm. They made it because they wanted to come and show. And the child, the, mm. the, my friend also said, I could see a sense of ownership in the library club kids that they own the space. Mm. For me, what I see in the United for Kids Foundation is a, a glimpse of hope that Nigeria will be better. Mm. If we can have enough of these kids who come out and say, you know what, somebody helped me. One child missed a whole first term because their, their family sent him to the East. They said, no, he has to come and learn some trade, something. So, but we then fought for him to come back. So he had missed the first term of school. Second term, he made up for the first term and the second term. And when we asked him that, how could you even do that? He said, you fought for me to come back. The least I could do was to show you that I'm grateful. Oh, wow. That's sweet. So this is, this is hope. There's hope in those spaces. And I want you to take your kids there to any of these spaces and let them interact and with these see. kids and see that the future really belongs to the hungry. Hmm. Awesome. Hmm. Let me ask you um, the issue of uh, character. Yes. Um, I deal with a lot of young people and I am, I wouldn't use the word, the word that just popped into my head, but I am not happy with what I see. Yeah. I see people who claim to be hungry for success, but they do not have the character to stay. They do not have the character to be humble. They do not have the character to follow. They are very entitled. They come into your space and they want the world to worship them. And I see it as lack of parenting. And I don't, give, I don't make excuses because you hear excuses. I wasn't raised from a very functional home. You know, I had to raise myself at some point. But I see people who are raised from, so to speak, functional homes, and they're still not giving. What are we I don't missing? Know, what are we missing? What is that thing we need to start doing? It's not just Nigeria. Everywhere. It's everywhere. I teach first years and second years in college. And the first thing I say, because, okay, in Nigeria, you can see somebody comes into your space. They don't look at you and say, look at her, she's black. I don't even talk to her. But I have to have that. I step into my class, and they're like, Wait, she's in that religion where they're always killing people. She has an accent, black. so she's not from here. She's black and she's female. So the odds are against you. Yes. <laughs> so I know, but the first day of class, when I step into my class, I say, some of you are going to struggle, and I'm here for that struggle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you through it. You're going to struggle because this is the first time a Muslim immigrant black woman is going to tell you no. And you're going to struggle, and I'm going to be here for it. So... <laughs> They know when I start blabbing off in Nigeria, they're like, oh my God, she's mad. So, <laughs> but I think it is about us adults setting boundaries. Mm. Because they come into your space and maybe, not you, maybe you look, oh, their parents is so, so, so person. I might need their favor tomorrow. So I'm not going to call out their bad behavior. Mm. And that's yeah. what is spoiling yep. of our schools. Absolutely. Mm. We have to wrap up. Let me just take a few uh, messages and then we'll mm -hmm. wrap up with this. Someone was like, I really agree with this guest. Um, Daisy said, I had to learn a lot of things on my own. Apparently, she's abroad. Then someone, um, Adri Shadam says, DC projects, but it is um, projects, discipline, and execution with the f within a frame of time. And... Um, any other thing, Nima? Mm. Any tweet there? Mm. Okay, we have to wrap up, but is there any final thing you want to tell us that you're working on so that we can, you know, pay attention mm -hmm. to it? Fortunately, not much, but I hope that your guests and you can pay our kids a visit. We'll love we love Yes, please. We have libraries in Ojojo Primary School by the Road Safety um, Office. We have libraries in front of ExxonMobil, in front of Eco Hotel, the mm. schools that are there, and in Shomolu. Please come and read to the kids. Mm. They want to see you. Awesome. They want to hear from you. They want to, they want to feel like the world 
is going to be it's a little bit closer. Yeah. And you plan to start the library in first stack. In first stack. Yeah. We'll yeah. So, yeah. All right, we have we to wrap up, guys. Thank that. you so <laughs> much, Dr. Fajing Bessie, Balogun, for being here. We really appreciate you. We learned a lot from you. Thank you. If you did not get anything from this show, let me just give you a few recap. Okay. Number one, future belongs to the hungry. Yes. Let your children be hungry. Because if not, the future, the, we don't want to raise consumers. We want to raise producers. Yes. We need to stop hovering over our children. But, Give them uh, power Stop that. <laughs> Keep your kids Mother hungry. Ain't. Ask your child to label their feelings. Mm -hmm. Very, important. very important at all times. And um, read the Miller next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank all you right, that's me. all we can take on the show today. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.